Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Alright. You from the local paper or something? No. Nah. salute to the to uh, fallen General Granberry here. Um, my name's uh, Ben Hatch. I'm from Fort Worth, uh, Lee Camp, the Robert E. Lee Camp of the Sons of Confederate Veterans in Fort Worth. And uh, the folks here in Granberry graciously had me come down uh, and help them with this ceremony. Let me uh, start by giving you a little bit of uh, biographical information on General Granberry. Uh, Actually, there's some there's some question about how his name was spelled. Um, they've uh, they've spelled it after the town here, but there's uh, there's also some uh, some belief that uh, he spelled his name uh, as a G R A N B E R R Y as a as a berry on a on a tree or something. But uh, anyway, it's uh, he's a however you spell his last name, he's a he's a genuine Confederate hero. Johnson Granberry entered the Confederate Army as a captain of Company A in the 7th Regiment of the Texas Infantry on October 2nd, 1861, when he was 30 years old. His advancement through the different ranks was spectacular. The organization of the regiment was perfected in Kentucky, where Granberry was made a major on November 10th. On February 15th, 1862, he was appointed Lieutenant Colonel. While, uh, while he was in charge of a regiment at Fort Donelson, that was in Tennessee. In August 1862, after the prisoners captured at Fort Donelson had been exchanged, which included General Granberry, Granberry was made a colonel and stationed in northern Mississippi. He distinguished himself in action at the battles of Raymond, Mississippi, and in the, uh, the more famous battle of Chickamauga and Missionary Ridge, where he helped rout the enemy after his commanding officer, General James E. Smith, had been carried from the field badly wounded. Granberry's part in the battle at Ringgold Gap, where he commanded Hood's Texas Brigade, evoked commendation from General Patrick Claiborne. On February 29, 1864, Granberry was promoted to a Brigadier General in the Army of the Confederate States of America and was placed in command of the famous Texas Brigade. He was killed in action at Franklin, Tennessee. On November 30th, 1864, and buried here in Hood County at the town of Grand. I've done a lot of these uh, ceremonies at the at great sides of Confederate veterans. Uh, this this is always a, a special one because most of these uh, most of these old gentlemen, these Confederate veterans, you look at their the dates on their on their tombstones. It's like 1921. 1932, 1918, you know, they survived the war. 
born, they they uh, died as, as old men uh, long after the war. But if you look at General Granbury's tombstone, 1864, that's still pretty much in the middle of the war. He uh, he was killed in action, fell in combat against the uh, the Yankee invaders against our uh, against our so uh, Southland. His uh, last words were, "Forward, men! Never let it be said that Texas lagged a fight." I tell you, those are those are really uh, excellent last words for a first. A lot of people are under the mis mis uh, uh, the misinformation that the soldiers of the South fought for the preservation of slavery. That's not true. Uh, history in the 19th century is just as complicated as, as uh, current events are today. There were many, many events in the air, many events uh, that uh, were at issue uh, at, at, in, the, uh, at, in the early 1860s. Uh, what the Southern soldier fought for most was actually was actually freedom. I know that, that uh, that's a, a hard concept for a lot of people today to accept, but uh, they they were actually fighting for freedom, freedom as citizens and freedom uh, the freedom of their states to uh, serve their citizens. That's what the Confederate soldier fought for. So with uh, we'll we'll go ahead and uh, get on started with the rest of the ceremony. But I just wanted to say these few words to give a little bit of background on General Granberry and um, his, uh, speci his, his special sacrifice in uh, being uh, coming all the way from Texas to, to be uh, killed in battle in Tennessee, uh, fighting for his state. Thanks a lot again, everybody, uh, for coming.
whose glory is. Some of the people say, give me silver, and some say, give me
today. Historically, the service that we're fixing to go through is to honor those who have died for a cause. We come today to honor General Grant Perry and those special souls who have passed. This service is in hopes that, that God will hear our words in memory of a loved one, our ancestor, our ancestor. People who lack knowledge of the past are like a tree without roots. Very strong statement. Philippians 2, 17. But even if I am being poured out by the drink offering or the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. In the spirit of remembrance, we drink to honor the importance of heritage, family, and friends. You are invited to step forward one at a time and state something about your ancestry, state something about the cause, the South, or anything else special to you that you want to do. If you don't feel comfortable with speaking or saying anything, just step forward and participate in the vibration. What, what this is, uh, please take a sip of the beverage, which this libation service is a water libation service. Historically, it is alcohol, juice, or water. All of them satisfy the ceremony. Up the canteen, take a drink, take a sip, state your words, and then pour the remainder on General Granberry's grave. We raise a cup to God in order to show reverence to these memories. I want to be grateful for the general and his dear wife because of all of us men know behind every great man is a great woman. I also want to honor First Lieutenant Cornelius A. Schultz, 11th North Carolina Sharpshooters, who not only endured the dangers of the war, lost an arm, and went back to Greensboro, North Carolina to become a jailer. Anybody that can be a one-armed jailer, I have to agree.
like to honor General Granberry, as well as my ancestor, Adam Adams, my great-grandfather, who served in the 32nd Georgia Regiment, uh, then moved to Texas and is buried in the Mount Zion Cemetery in rural Stevens County. General Granberry, who gave his gave his all fighting for uh, for freedom and the Constitution, and also my ancestor William B. Hatch, the Third Texas Cavalry, who was a hard-riding Texas cavalryman, survived the war, and passed away in 1921 in Lamar County, Texas. His oldest son was in the United States Navy in World War One. Granberry, we honor you. I'm here in honor of General Granberry. I'm also here in honor of my great grandfather, John Caleb Bussey. Hilliard's Legion, Alabama, fought with Granberry at Chickamauga. They were decimated. After that, he got turned into the 60th Alabama, put on a train ship to Virginia, fought Drury's Bluff. Then they went to Petersburg got resurrected. He got captured in Sailor's Creek. Got put in a prison that very few people know anything about in Norfolk where so many people were committing suicide. They had colored guards. It's a miracle. Thank you. It's a miracle I'm here and most all of us. General Granberry today and uh, I'd like to uh, honor my ancestor, uh, my third great-grandfather, John C. Anderson of the 
Union, Texas Cavalry. Uh, 150 years ago, today was uh, in the Battle of Mansfield, Texas. Uh, his brother, Sam B. Anderson, who died uh, 150 years ago today, or with the same company, 28 Texas Cavalry. God bless the South. by the sport the car on the front and at home. They'd have a relative too. First, the Army of Tennessee, Granberry's and Cleber's division, part of that. My, two of my ancestors, Private Lovin Wilson, Company D, 60th Georgia, killed at the Battle of Second Manassas. His brother, Private Pleasant Wilson, Company D, 60th Georgia, wounded at the Battle of Second Manassas. Dixie, away, away, Dixie, 
Dixie land, I'll take my stand to live and die. Dixie, away, away, away down south. Dixie. Left, march. 